Good evening, and welcome to the Church of God of Chicago Friday Night Bible Class. We're so glad and excited to be here, and we're excited about our topic for this evening. So, without further ado, let's acknowledge the Lord in a word of prayer, that he will bless our service tonight. Heavenly Father, Lord in Jesus Christ, most righteous and holy name, we come before your throne, Lord. Father, asking you for one more touch, O oh God, one more anointing, O oh God. Lord, we're looking for one you more. tonight, O oh God, that you would bless and be in our midst, dear Father. Lord, we're looking for you, dear God, to enlighten the hearts of your people, O oh God. Feed your sheep tonight, yes. we pray, in yes. Jesus Christ's most righteous and holy name. Lord, we've gone through many different things, dear God. Lord, the pandemic, Lord God, has taken us through, Lord. But, oh God, we're so grateful and glad that you have kept our hearts and our minds. Stay on you, Lord. So, Father, tonight, oh God, anoint us afresh, oh God, because of ourselves, we can do nothing, Lord. Father, we know that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, Lord. So bless us tonight, we pray. Have your way in the class, Lord. Let it be edifying. Let it be a blessing, oh God. Encourage hearts, Lord. Lift up heads that are hung down tonight, oh God. Those that might be sick or afflicted, oh God. Lord, would you heal and touch bodies for your glory in Jesus' name. Father, whatever the need might be, we pray that you will supply. And Lord, for what's accomplished, we will give you the glory, the honor, and all the praise. Because we ask it in Jesus Christ's most righteous name. We thank you for it all, Lord. Amen. 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 Well, here we are tonight. And the title of our lesson is Lord, Teach Us to Pray. So why don't we look at the book of Luke. The 11th chapter, and our reader will start reading. Just give us that first verse, if you would, Sister Crystal. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, yes. when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. The disciples were here asking Jesus, Lord, would you teach us to pray? Now, he had just been praying, and he was in that certain place praying. And when he had finished, I guess they were inspired to the extent where they were like, Lord, would you teach us to pray? Oh, yeah. You know, in this crisis time in which we live, you know what? God is teaching us That's to true. pray. Yeah. If we don't get any other lesson from being in the house and not being able to get out and do all the things that we used to do. If we don't get any other lesson, the lesson that we are getting or should be getting tonight is that we need to pray. Amen. These are praying times in which we're living in. Yes. And I just thank God for the burden of my heart tonight. I love to pray, don't you? Yes. Amen. I know the pastor preached about it on Sunday, but I have this lesson for a long time. Amen. And I thank God that we can be on one accord. Amen. You know, I remember growing up here and hearing that there were three ingredients that you needed to keep you saved. You need humility. You need honesty. And you need to be teachable. Yes, yes. And when we get saved, we don't know as much as we think we do. Mm -hmm. And we need to be taught so many things. Yes. And most and foremost, we need to be teachable about this thing called prayer. Yes. Pastor called it our neglected weapon. Mm -hmm. You know, it's an offensive weapon for us. Yes. You know, if we don't pray, we won't stay saved. Right. Do you realize that it took praying for us to get saved? Yes. So how much more is it going to take for us to keep praying in order to stay saved? Matthew eleven twenty nine. I'll quote it. Jesus said, "Take my yoke upon you, and what? 
learn of me. He said, I'm meek and lowly of heart. So Jesus wants to teach us many things. And tonight, by the grace of God, he wants to teach us more about prayer. I think about the ministry's job and responsibility to teach you as the saints the right and the good way. That's our part. But do you realize that your part is to take it in? Amen. Your part is to obey it? Your part is to fear the Lord or respect the Lord and serve him in truth, as Samuel said, with all your heart, yes. considering all the great things that God has done for you. I'm so glad that I'm saved in this end time in which we live. If I wasn't saved, there's no telling where I would be during this pandemic. I'm so grateful to God because I can see the blessings even in the crisis. You know, this is a hard place that we're in. People are sick. People are dying. But realize, those are souls. They are lost. They are dying. And you know what? We have a great privilege yes. that we can call on the Almighty God on behalf of someone else that they might give their heart to Him and be saved. Amen. What a blessing and a privilege it is. God has kept me saved. It's um, going on, what, 28 years? It's just a small number. The number doesn't mean a thing. What I rejoice in is the miracle of it all. How God can change my night to day. How he can change my life from darkness to light. How he can just make me a completely new creature. So that the people that I used to go to high school with, the people that I used to run the streets with, you know what? They have to ask, who, who is this? All right. I thank God I'm not the same one that I used to be. What song says, I am redeemed, bought with the price. And it's because Jesus has changed my whole life. Amen. And if anybody asks you just who I am, just tell them, you know, she got saved. God did a work on her. Yeah, she's different. All right. And no glory to myself. All the glory goes to God. Amen. All right. So, it's our job to teach you the good and the right way, to be examples of the believers. But you have a responsibility as a saint of God to take in the truth, mm -hmm. obey the truth, and serve God with all your heart, all your mind. Love Him with all your strength. If you do that and you pray, He will keep you safe. Amen. That is what, is what has kept me safe. All right, let's go to Psalm 66 and verse 18, Sister Crystal. I wanted to deal with something that we really don't think about per se, but it is something that we need to understand. Before we pray, you know what we need to do? We need to check our hearts. That's right. We need to make sure that my heart is right with God. What would be the use of me, hypocrite, living a double life, coming to prayer service, leading devotion, and all of that, and my prayer is just hitting the ceiling. Amen. Because God will not hear sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of him and doeth his will, him he hears. Amen. So we need to make sure that our hearts are right. We need to make sure that we know that we can get a prayer through. What does uh, Psalm 66, 18 say? If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Amen. Do we get that? If I have any blockage, willful, no sin in my heart. I'm, I love Sister Crystal, but I hate Sister Deborah. I got arts. You know, I got issues with the pastor. Well, you know, I don't appreciate what the minister said about this. I don't like the counsel. 
If there's anything blocking the way, do you know what? I need to just get up off my knees and find an altar of repentance. Find a minister or somebody that can pray with me and help me break through to God. Right. Because God is not going to hear my prayer. The Bible says in the book of James that if we confess our faults, he is faithful. Uh, if we confess our faults and pray one for another, that is, the effectual, fervent prayers of what? Righteous man. Somebody who is right with God. That is the prayer that will avail much. Mark 11 and 25 says that when you pray, if you can get that for me, sis, when we stand praying, you know what we have to do? We have to forgive. Jesus is going to give us the template here in Luke, the 11th chapter, a little outline of what our prayer might look like, all the high points that we might hit and all of that. And one thing that he addresses is that we asking him, Lord, if there's anything that you pointed out in my life that you're not pleased with, Lord, please forgive me. But guess what? If I haven't forgiven my brother or my sister or my enemy or whoever it might be, my boss, my neighbor, whoever, if I'm holding them, do you know that God is holding me? That's right. Mm. And he is not going to hear my prayer. So we need to check our hearts. What does Mark 11 and 25 say, sis? And when you stand praying, when you stand praying, forgive. Forgive. If you have aught against any, mm -hmm. that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. Yes. Forgiveness is so important. I think about it so many times when little things might irritate me. You know, things that people may do. It's usually the people that are close to you oh, yeah. that can irritate you the easiest, right? But I have to think about it like my husband tells me. He says, well, I better forgive you because God sure enough forgave me. And I'm like, you're so right. Mm -hmm. And when I put it in that context for myself, I'm like, who am I to make myself God that I can't forgive you right. for the little that you have done to me? Think about all of what Jesus suffered for. Mm -hmm. Our sins, the things that you don't even know about my life. He suffered. He was tortured. He was bruised. He was broken. He was spit on. All for you and me. And all for us to be forgiven of God the Father. Amen. So how is it in the world that I can put myself in the place of God and not forgive? God is the only one that can choose not to forgive. All right, what does Isaiah 59, 1 and 2 say, sis? Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot say. Yes. Neither is his ear heavy that it cannot hear. Yes. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. Yes. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. That he will not hear. I'm just driving the point home because we don't preach and teach our opinions. We give you the pure, unadulterated word of God, straight from the book. If I can't back it up, then I don't need to say it. I don't need to teach right. it, and I don't need to preach it. Amen. So I'm just giving you the word, and we have to eat the whole roll. Okay? okay? All right. We read Mark 11 and 25 already. Let's go to Psalms 32. 1 through 6. We must be clear with God when we pray. And you know what? We can be. We definitely can be. If it were not possible, God would not be expecting us to be clear when we pray. You can read that for me, sis. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven. Yes. Whose sin is covered. Amen. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputed not iniquity, yes. and in whose spirit there is no guile. Listen. When I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. Mm -hmm. 
for day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer. Mm -hmm. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. Mm -hmm. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou yes. forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Yes. For this shall everyone that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Yes. Surely in the floods of great waters they shall not come nigh unto him. Mm -hmm. Thou art my hiding place. Yes. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Yes. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. Stop I, there. <laughs> that was good, though. <laughs> Praise God. So the psalmist is going through with you here from his stage of him hiding iniquity and him praying to God and just the prayers hitting the ceiling, just as dry as ever could be, no refreshing in it, but in love and mercy, God put his hand on him, Amen. and it was heavy on him. You know you need to get that right. You know you need to talk to somebody and confess that. You know I'm not pleased with you. You know I'm not regarding iniquity because it's in your heart. You need to get help. So when the psalmist decides, I can't take this no more. God, I'm just going to acknowledge you're right. I'm not right. I need help. When you acknowledge your sin to God, when you come clean with God, it says over here in verse, what is that, verse 5, when I acknowledge my sin, Unto the Lord, verse 5. And mine iniquity have I not hid. Yes. I said I will confess my transgressions. I am going to tell off on myself because I can't exist like this no more. I need to be right with you, God. I want to make sure that my prayers are getting through to you, God. What else? And thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. With God, there is mercy. Amen. And forgiveness. Mm. Thank God. And what else? For this shall everyone that is godly pray yes. unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. If you're honest. Remember we talked about it? Honesty, humility, and being teachable. If you're honest, you'll just come clean. Mm -hmm. And God will save you. God will heal you. He'll forgive you. And he will hear your prayers. Thank God. Let's go on to 1 John, the third chapter, because we want to nail that down. Verse 20 and verse, through verse 22. 1 John, the third chapter, verse 20 through 22. Because it's our hearts. Yes, God will speak to us through our hearts. And you know what? God will also speak to us through our consciences. But right now, we're dealing with our hearts. What does it say, sis? For if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our heart. Now, if my heart is condemning me and when I go down to pray, you know you told that lie. You know you lied on your income tax. Or whatever it might be. You know you gave that boy your phone number. That ain't right. Say, sisters, don't do that. You're not married. If our hearts condemn us, God is greater than God our is hearts. God is greater than our hearts. God knows everything. Who do we think we're moving? Mm -hmm. But what? And knoweth all things. He knows everything. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, mm -hmm. then have we confidence toward God. Right? And whatsoever we ask, Amen. we receive of him because we keep his commandments yes. and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. If our hearts have cleared us when we get down to pray, guess what? We're going to have that which we're asking God to do if it's according to his will. Read 1 John 5th chapter verse 14 and 15 says, 
just to back that up. And this is the confidence that we have in him. Yes. That yes. if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Yes. And we know that he hear us. Mm -hmm. Whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. Amen. Isn't it a wonderful thing when you can get down on your knees and you know that there's nothing between my soul and my Savior. Amen. There's nothing between us now. Amen. It's clear. It's free. Yes, I've been hurt. People have wronged me. They talk to me sharply or shortly or people have maybe told my business or something like that. But Lord, you help me to forgive. Lord, I don't want to be holding anybody in my heart. And God will do just that. I'll be clear. I'll be free by the grace of God. Amen. Our consciences need to be void of offense Amen. with both God and man. Yeah. What does Acts 24 and 16 say, sis? And herein do I exercise myself mm -hmm. to have always a conscience void of offense toward God and toward man. Now this was Paul and he was being accused by this great lawyer named Tertullus before the governor Felix and the high priest Ananias and they were just trumping up all kinds of charges and accusations against Paul basically because he was preaching the truth and the gospel. And you know what? When you're doing things that are pleasing and right to God, you know the devil acts just like that old turtleless, that old crooked lawyer. And he'll come and he'll try to accuse you mm -hmm. and try to charge you. Mm -hmm. But here is the consolation. If you know you've been living right, uh -huh. if you know you your heart is clean and you haven't been cutting any corners, you know you haven't been slipping and tipping and doing any of that stuff along the back side, you know, in between side and all of that, then the, the accuser, that old devil, he is yeah. cast down. Right. And you can pray and ask God, Lord, help me. How did I do today? Right. What, what went good and what didn't go good? Lord, I know I could have been a little uh, more patient with my husband. So God, I want you to just help me in that area. Or Lord, I know that I was, I got, my voice was a little bit, it rose a little bit when I was angry at my daughter. But oh God, help me. Help me to go back and straighten it out. Amen. And once you do that, guess what? You shut the devil's mouth. Right. Straighten it up. Yes. Be Walk humble. Amen. We talked about honesty, humility, and being teachable. Yes. These are the things that will keep you saved. Amen. Let's read here, going back to Psalm 66, 19 to 20. What but does that verily, say? God hath heard me. He hath attended to the voice of my prayer. Yes. Blessed be God, which hath not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. Amen. Amen. When I acknowledge my lack, or my, I acknowledge my sin, or whatever the offense, whatever it might be, you know what? This is when God is going to hear me. And you know what? We have to search ourselves. Lamentations, the third chapter and the 40th verse says, let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. Psalms 139, 23 and 24 says, search me, O God, and see, know my heart. See, try my ways. See if there be any wicked way in me. You know it takes an honest heart to pray like that. Yes. It takes somebody who really means business with God to constantly ask him, Lord, search me. Is it me? What am I doing? Show me what to do. Show me where I'm going astray. Search me. Amen. Try my heart and my reins. See if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Amen. That's honesty. That is honesty and humility. Amen. Let's go to the next.
next slide. And we're just about to wrap it up with this part of preparing to pray. You know, we think about prayer and over in the book of Timothy where um, Paul said, first pray, I exhort you, and all of that, offer supplications and thanksgiving. We're going to get to it. But we want to talk about the how to pray. Amen. This is how we need to come to God. How we need to approach Him. One scripture talks about who shall ascend unto thy holy hill. Only the one that has clean hands Amen. and clean lips. A clean life and a clean heart. Amen. If we don't come like that, we better go somewhere and get right. That's and true. there is help. Remember, there is forgiveness and there is mercy with God. Amen. All right, so I'm just nailing this down. Over in the book of 2 Timothy, the second chapter, verse 19, what does that say? Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Yes. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. Yes. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Stop there for one moment. This is foundational. This is non-negotiable. Mm -hmm. If I am saying I'm saved, if I am naming the name of Christ, I have got to be done. I mean done with the sin business. Amen. Once Amen. and for all. It's got to be a done deal. Yeah. It's not got to be that I'm thinking, well, you know, I, I kind of believe that, you know, we shouldn't smoke, but I feel like, you know, sometimes I need a cigarette. Really? No. 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 We teach here you need to live holy. That's right. Okay? You Your need body. to live clean. Your yeah. body is the temple oh, of the God. Holy Ghost. Amen. And the Lord is going to destroy them that defile it. Yeah. So you don't do those things. And you follow the instruction of your teaching. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. So, that's foundational. We're talking about the one and only foundation like Pastor preached it. If I'm naming the name of Christ, I have got to be done with sin. Amen. Done with the boyfriend. Come on. Done with the girlfriend. Done with the gambling mode. All right. Done with the lotto ticket. Done. Done with sin. Yes. Yes. I came to Jesus sick of sin. Right. And he didn't fail me then. And he made me new without the then. And he Amen. will not fail you now. Amen. If you're sick and tired of sin, why would you go back Amen. to the weak and the beggarly elements of sin and come in here and sing the songs of deliverance and songs of Zion? Nothing but the blood of Jesus and all of that. That's hypocrisy. Right. That's pretense. Don't do that. Don't do that. We love your soul. So we tell you the truth. Amen. I know it may not feel good if you're not used to hearing it like this. Somebody told me, do you all have to talk about anything other than sin? Oh, yeah, we do. We do. But sin is the main thing. So keep the main thing the main thing. Sin is the problem. Amen. Sin is the reason. For this reason and this cause, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Right. What is that? Sin in your life and in your heart. Amen. Amen. All right. Read on for me, sis. But in a great house, yes. there are not only vessels of gold yes. and of silver, yes. but also of wood and of earth, yes. and some to honor and some to dishonor. Yes. What's the great house? It's the church of God. And the house that's built on a rock has a solid, sure, firm foundation. It's built on the rock of truth and the rock that is Christ. Okay? So here we are in the church of God. 
You can pray to God and ask God, Lord, can you make me a vessel of gold? Can you make me a vessel unto honor? I don't want to be wood. I don't want to be earthy and carnal. I don't want to be wood or stubble. I don't want to be just around to be around. Lord, I want a golden experience. Amen. Well, all you have to do is pray to God and ask him, and he will give you the desires of your heart if you're walking up right before him. Amen. Amen. Keep reading, sis. If a man per therefore purge himself from thee, yes. he shall be a vessel unto honor, yes. sanctified, and meet for the master's use, yes. and prepared unto every good work. Prepared. Prepared unto every good work. One of the good works, one of the most essential and most important works there is for a Christian or a saint is the work and the labor of prayer. You want to be prepared to pray? Make sure your heart is right. Read on, sis. Flee also youthful lust. Yes. But follow after righteousness. Let's follow righteousness. Faith. Faith. Charity. Charity. Peace. Peace. With them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Out of a what heart? A pure heart. When we call on God, we must call on him out of a pure heart. See, it's only sin if you know is wrong and you're doing it anyway. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be right, just don't do it. Ask God to help you mm -hmm. to resist the temptation. We're all going to be tempted. Yeah. What did Jesus say? He said, watch and pray. That you not be led into temptation. He said the spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh, this flesh, it is so weak. Amen. It's prone to fail us. That's why we can't walk after the flesh. Right. Amen. We have to walk after the spirit. And as, as many as are led by the spirit of God, those are the ones that are the sons of God. The daughters of God. All right, let's keep going. All right, let's go back to our text in Luke 11. And it says here, verse 2. And he said unto them, Yes. When you pray, yes. say, Our Father, yes. which art in heaven, mm -hmm. hallowed be thy name, mm -hmm. thy kingdom. Come, yes. thy will be done. Yes. As in heaven, so in earth. Yes. Give us day by day our daily bread. Yes. And forgive us our sins. Yes. For we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation. Yes. But deliver us from evil. Amen. So when I look at this, Many people in Christendom or in theology, you know what they call this? They call this the Lord's Prayer. Well, it's not the Lord's Prayer. What Christ was giving to the disciples here is he was giving them a little template, a little checklist, if you will, if you just bear with me in my own thinking and my folly. And your prayer doesn't have to be exactly like this, but it needs to have these touch points in it. You need to be acknowledging your heavenly Father. You don't need to be praying to no other God before Him. You need to pray to the God who made heaven and the God who made earth. You need to also ask God to provide all your needs. You know, He's going to do it anyway, but one scripture says you have not, because you ask not. He wants us to talk to him. This is just like a little starting point to get the conversation with God going. Because after all, that's what prayer is. It's us talking to God and him talking to us. Yeah, so he's like, yeah, these are some touch points that you might want 
to pray in if you feel like, well, I just don't know how to pray. Here are some starting points here. And what he says here, for, and forgive us our sins, we've already talked about that. He's just reminding us that there are some things that he may bring to our attention during the day that he wasn't pleased with. And then we need to acknowledge it and ask him, Lord, forgive me and help me and don't be found here again. Amen. And then he might bring to your attention that maybe we didn't feel so good when uh, Sister Cucumber stepped on my toe, proverbially speaking. Then you know what? I need to be in mind that I need to forgive if I want to be forgiven. So it's just a little checklist, that's what I was calling it, of what, you know, we we might incorporate it into our prayer for the glory of God, if you bear with me in that. Um, let's go back to Luke, the first chapter again. I mean, Luke 11 and the first verse, sister, I'm sorry. Verse number one of Luke 11. I want to hone in on this. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place. Stop right there. Jesus was praying in a certain place. Do you have a certain place where you pray? Do you have a little prayer altar wherever you live and dwell? Where God knows that's where we're going to meet. That's where we're going to have our, our conference. That's where we're going to talk and commune. You know, when I was a single parent, and I knew it could be a little challenging to find a place, maybe if you live with a lot of people or what have you, but you can go in the bathroom. That's right. You can go somewhere in a corner in the basement. You can go anywhere where you know you can steal away of being, and be alone with God. So it was challenging for me as a single parent. I, my baby was little, and I wanted to spend time alone with God. So God told me, basically, he just encouraged me, you just take that baby with you, you lay her out on that bed, and you pray. You pray long enough, she's going to be asleep. <laughs> and that's what happened so it wasn't foreign to my baby when we then came into the services to sit still because we had been praying with her and I believe those prayers that went up over my baby when she was asleep right there I believe those prayers have been embedded in her life those blessings and those things that I talk to God about, the word of God and all of that, I believe that that has affected her in a good way. Amen. When you go out of town with the saints, you know, you know one thing I don't like is on the mission field or wherever we are, I don't have that private place to pray with God. I don't like it. I don't like it. I need to be with my God. I want to be uninhibited, uninterrupted, no intrusions. Amen. Praise God. I just want to be in his presence. Mm -hmm. But when you got all, and then there's things, you know, and you're like, who's going to bed first? Who's going to need to go in the bathroom and just steal a little whisper of prayer? Can't be free with it. Yep. But God knows our hearts. He knows all things. And he takes the will for the deed. Amen. But find yourself a certain place. John 18 and 2, sister. The Garden when, of Gethsemane? Yes. The Garden of Gethsemane was, for Christ, a place of prayer. Mm -hmm. It's the same place where he agonized to get the victory over himself and his flesh. And do you know, it's the same place where he was arrested sure. and betrayed by his own. Amen. That scripture in John 18 and 2 says what? And Judas also, yes. which betrayed him, yes. knew the place. He For knew Jesus the place. oft times resorted thither Yes. Yes. In your home, in your family, 
Do they know the place where you pray? Do they know and get it when that door is closed? Oh, I know what she's doing. If they don't, they should. That's right. Come on. Because you should have such a prayer habit in you, yes. such yes. a prayer life in yes. you, that they can, it can be like clockwork. Mm -hmm. I know she's going to be up at 5 o'clock. I know she's going to be in the room. I can't go in there. Mm -hmm. Amen. Do they Amen. know the place where you pray? Amen. Establish an altar or a certain place. Where you, where you live that God and you know you'll meet on a daily basis. You want to be discreet when you pray. And this is a lot of reading, but um, I guess if we could just read verse 6 for time's sake, sis. But thou, mm -hmm. when thou prayest, yes. enter into thy closet. Yes. And when thou hast shut thy door, mm -hmm. pray to thy Father which is in secret, yes. and thy Father which seeth in secret yes. shall reward thee openly. He'll reward you openly. Mm -hmm. Nothing like having a secret place of prayer. Psalms 91 and 1 says, He that dwelleth yes. in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. Don't you want to just abide under his wings? Don't you want to just safely trust? Amen. Be in that place, in that position where the wicked one touch you not. No matter what darts or whatever arrows that fly by day or the pestilence that cometh by night, he'll preserve us. Amen. He'll keep us. He'll cover us. He will shield us. But it's our part to find that secret place. All right, let's turn to, we're going to skip that for time's sake. Let's go to 1 Timothy 2 and 1. Sis, it says here, the first thing I want to do is pray. Is that your testimony? Is that the first thing that you want to do in the morning? Or do you do everything else? And that prayer be last on your list. When you know you're in a hurry, you got to rush through. You got you got two minutes. Is that what we want to give to God? We want our prayer requests to be high priority, but we make prayer low priority. Come on now. Come on. Prayer is not a glamorous thing. It's not. It's not the thing that everybody is breaking down the door to get to that service. But the ones I take note, the ones that come to the prayer service, I know they're after something with God. That's right. Praise they're God. after his utmost, right. his highest. Amen. Because no carnal fleshly person, unless they're just bound by hypocrisy, mm -hmm. I want to come to the prayer service and come faithfully. Mm -hmm. But prayer is something that we need to we need to do more of. Amen. We need to do more of. So let it be first. First of all, he says, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for just my friends. For those who haven't done me wrong. Not for the one that owe me the money that she haven't paid me in a year. For all men. And you know what, precious souls, we're living in a time where we need to be praying. We're not going to that next scripture yet, but we need to be praying for all those that are in authority, yes. all yes. those that are in high places and high positions. We need to be praying for kings. We need to be praying for the pastors and ministers. We need to be praying for everybody that has any leadership position. Because this world has been turned upside yes, down. Absolutely. And not in a good way. In a bad way. We need to pray. Mm -hmm. 
true. Prayer has to be a priority. And what does that say, sis? This is Psalms, the fifth chapter, one through three. Give ear to my words. Yes. Oh, Lord. Yes. Consider my meditation. Yes. Hearken unto the voice of my cry. Yes. My King and my God. For yes. unto thee will I pray. Yes. My voice shalt thou hear in the morning. Oh, my Lord. Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto yes. thee and will look up. Yes. yes. God, I promise you, I want you to keep me saved. So, Lord, you're going to hear my voice. Amen. Lord, I want to talk to you, and I want you to talk to me. Tell me what you want me to do. Show me your way, Lord God. I don't know how to go in and out. I've never lived this life before. In the morning, at noonday, in the evening, before I go to bed, Lord, I want you to hear my voice. It's not on my um, my. PowerPoint, but I, I want you to go with me to the book of Daniel, Sister Crystal. And when I think about Daniel, a man in the sixth, well, let's start at verse, um, chapter 5, verse 11 through 12, and then verse 14. But when I think about the testimony of this man, and it wasn't him giving his testimony, but his testimony went before him. You know why? Because Daniel was a man of prayer. Daniel prayed three times a day. And he didn't let anything stop him. He was consistent. He was faithful to God. And God was faithful to him. Read his testimony, Sister Crystal. Chapter 5, Daniel Chapter 5, verse 11 and 12. What does that say? There is a man in thy kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. Wow. And in the days of thy father, yes. light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, was found in him. Listen to that. Whom the king Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the yes. king. Yes. I say thy father made master of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. He was promoted. He had the very spirit of God in him. Keep reading. For as much as an excellent spirit, listen, and knowledge, an and understanding. excellent spirit, knowledge, understanding. You want that? My God. You want that? You need to be a woman or a man of prayer. Keep reading. Interpreting of dreams. Wow. And yes. showing of hard sentences. Yes. And dissolving of doubts. Yes. Were found in the same Daniel. Yes. Whom the king named Beltis Sajar. Yes. Now let Daniel be called and he will show the interpretation. Yes. Verse 14. I have even heard of thee that the spirit this is the of the king God. talking now. You know what? I heard about you. Mm -hmm. You know what, Sister Crystal? I heard about you. Wow. I heard about the life that you live. I heard about the excellent spirit that you have manifested. All kinds of pressure. All kinds of things thrown at you. You have manifested nothing but sweetness. Praise Keep man. reading. I have heard, even of thee, that the spirit of the gods is in thee. Yes. And that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee. Wow. You want that testimony? I do. Amen. I want it. Guess what? Get before God and pray. So good. Pray and seek his face. Call on your God. Wake up. Stop sleeping. Get up out the bed and pray. Amen. Read uh, chapter 6 and verse 3. Then this Daniel was preferred above the president Look at that. and princess because an excellent spirit was in him. Yes. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Oh my God. You want promotions? My God. You want someone to take note of you? Take note of God. Amen. Get before God. Pray to God. <laughs> Establish a prayer life. Establish a prayer habit. 
Call Lord God as many times a day as you can. Right. You're single, you young, you don't have no children. Come you on. know what you need to do? You need to pray. You need to pray. Stop ripping and running the streets, shopping and going out and lollygagging and all that. You need to be in the house anyway, so you may as well pray. Amen. All right, read uh, chapter 6, verse 10. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, yes. and his windows being open in his yes. chamber yes. toward Jerusalem. Windows open and all. Mm -hmm. I don't care who hit me. That's right. He Heaven be Father, God, and Lord, in the name of Jesus. Yes. Devil, bring it on. <laughs> he breathed. He kneeled upon his knees yes. three times a day and prayed. Three times a day. You know, I read about this man named Finney, and the man was greatly used of God in winning souls. And it said that he slept in his barn so that he could just have liberty to pray and not be hindered. Where is our mind concerning these things? God help me. Read chapter 6, verse 20 through 22. And we're coming to a close. And when he came to the den, yes. he cried with a lamb. Now this was Daniel. Let me just say this before you read it, sis. I'm sorry. Daniel had made such an impact on the king that when the decree, when those crooked, wicked folks had tricked the king into writing the decree that sent him to be put in the lion's den, Daniel had made such an impact on the king that the king was fasting for Daniel That's right. while Daniel was in the lion's den. And it wasn't Daniel, but it was the God that he served. It was the God that he worshipped. The God that he prayed to three times a day that made his life so effective. Mm -hmm. Did you finish that, sis? No, ma'am. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. Yes. And the king spake and said to Daniel, Daniel, oh Daniel, oh Daniel, servant of the living God. Listen to his testimony. You are servant of the living God. Is thy God whom thou servest continually? Has God delivered you, the one that you serve consistently, continually? Able to deliver thee from the lions? Come on now, read what he said. This was Daniel's reply. Mm -hmm. Then said Daniel unto yes. the king, What? O king, live forever. Live forever, king. My God has sent his my angel. My God sent his angel and has and shut, shut, shut the lion's, lion's mouth. mouth. Praise God. That they have not hurt me. They have hurt me. For as much as before him, innocency. I am innocent. I haven't done anything wrong. And also before thee, O king, yes, have I done no hurt. Right. And God delivered Daniel because Daniel was faithful to God. Can God count on you? Are you faithful to him? Right. It's not all about praying about yourself, you know, but it's about praying for others. It's about praying that God would use you and make you a light and make some ways, someone's pathway that's dark turn to light. Amen. It's about God. It's not about us. But God wants us to shine just like he made Daniel shine. And there's a scripture over in Daniel that says, And they that be wise shall be like the stars. And they that turn many to righteousness like the stars forever. That's how I want to be. God, I want souls to be saved from my life. But it starts with me being revived in prayer yeah. on my knees first. Yeah. All right. We're coming to a close here. Um, what does that say, sis? Mark 11, 24. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire, yes. when you pray, Believe that you receive them yes. and you shall have them. So we're talking about the how of 
prayer tonight. You need to come with a clean heart. You need to be consistent. You need to have faith that whatsoever you pray, God will give it to you. And that is basically the end of the class. You need to be persistent. Um, also, so we just get through some of that because importunity is so key. Just read here um, for a friend of mine and, and his journey has come. Sure. Luke, the fifth chapter, verse six. Luke okay. 11, verse six, right? The fifth verse. Oh, sixth verse. Yes, ma'am. What does it say? For a friend of mine, in his journey, is come to me, yes. and I have nothing to set before him. Uh -huh. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot I rise can't get up. Me. We're asleep, man. Come on. But what? I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend. He's not going to get up because they're friends. Yet because of his importunity. But well, because he keep knocking and disturbing his rest. He will rise He's and gonna give get up as many as he needs. Yes. Amen. And I say unto you. What? Ask. Ask. And it shall be given you. Yes. Seek. Seek. And ye shall find. Yes. Knock. And it shall be opened unto you. Yes. For everyone that asks receives. And he that seeks, find. And to him that knocks, it shall be open. Oh, yes. But if we got to come. That's right. If we never come and fall down on our knees, if we never engage in the act of prayer, what are we going to expect to receive Amen. from God? Amen. Anything that we want from God, we've got to ask him for it. And we've got to be in the right place of heart and mind in order to receive it. And we need to be persistent. We need to be importuned about it to the point of annoyance. As long as it's in God's will, will we can ask, we can seek, we can knock. And God is class. Lord, teach us to pray. The priority of prayer talks about the when and the how. We talked a little bit about that tonight. And Lord willing, if God permit, and I come before you again, we'll talk about a little bit more about prayer. But we thank God for the class tonight. I pray that it was a blessing to you. We'll look for you again on Sunday morning and at 9.15, Sunday morning Bible school. And at 11 o'clock is our morning message service. You can like us on Facebook, Periscope, and Twitter. And God bless you is our prayer.